Letter spacing and kerning does not have to be that difficult. We've got a couple of techniques that will save hours. And I mean hours, honestly. If this is your first time, welcome. I'm Adam, I'm a type designer and a logo designer. And today we're gonna to be talking about kerning and side bearing values or letter spacing. Your side bearing values are the spaces between each glyph edge and the design of that character. And kerning is where we try and optically compensate for the space between uh, a character sat next to another character. So for instance, a V and an A, we set a little bit closer together to reduce that space um, that's there. I'm making this sound way more complex than it needs to be. So the best thing for me to do is just to show you. Okay, so in glyphs, I've now got this uh, skyscraper font that I've been working on. It's kind of been shelved for a little bit while I do some other stuff. We've got some other fonts in the works, but it's good for just an example. So what we've got here is our uppercase font or uppercase set. And as you can see, each letter has a value of zero for each side bearings. So this is our side bearings values and we've set literally everything to zero. So the technique that I like to use is essentially it's, it's setting up a master glyph or a couple of master glyphs where we'll use the side bearing values from that and apply that to other characters. So what I like to do is with a H, I'll set the side bearing values on the H to 60 and I'll tend to color that as well. So let's color it green just to indicate which one is the master. And then I'll use that for the M, N and I because they've all got straight sides. And in those, we can then set this to H. And what we'll see is that these have then got the values of H. which is 60. So the next one that I'll do is an O because this is the most curved generally. And what I like to do for this one is, usually I'd have this at half as much as the H on any other font, but because this font is quite tall, I might not need that. But for, for this example, I'll just show it at half the H. Now we can either type in 30 because we've got 60 for H or we can use um, a fraction and the information for that is equals uppercase H divided by 2 and that should give us 30. If we do the same on the other side equals H divided by 2 and let's double click into that you can see that we've got a value of 30. So let's then just apply these these values then to a D. So the D, I'm going to assign the left hand side the value of H and the right hand side the value of R because essentially they've got the characteristics of H on one side and the characteristics of R on the other side. So on the left hand side it's H, on the right hand side it's R. If we double click into that, you can see that we've got value of 60 and a value of 30. So this will become our basis for uh, for everything really. Just, uh, yeah, it's, it's our foundations for the, for the whole font. So what's really good about this now is that by changing the value of H, because this is our master, so say for instance we change this to 100, 
and then update O, we've got 50 in O. And again, update D, we've got the value of H and the value of O. So that means that then when we come to update metrics on other stuff, those will also update with the new values that we've assigned to them. So that's side bearings. Similar to setting up masters with your side bearings, you can do a kind of the same thing with kerning. So what we're going to do is with the upcase V is give this a group tag of V. We will also do the same with W because we know that the values will be will need to be the same or the space between the A and the V will need to be the same. And then the A we will call A because we know that the A and the V together will need to be the same distance between the A and the W. So if we so with, with the selected A, we'll give that a value of minus 50 on the left and minus 50 on the right. So you can see that everything there now has the same values, including the W, which is linked to the V kerning group or the V kerning pair. So the idea with both the side bearings and kerning groups is that you group characters with very similar attributes. So the V and the W I'm grouping together um, for both the same side bearings and the same um, kerning group as well. I'll just group that under V. So when I change the A and the V values together, it also works on the W. When you move to lowercase letters, I'll group an O, an E, uh, a lowercase d for the left hand side and lowercase b for the right hand side. So you can quickly create a nice neat set of groups where you're using the same value for those and not having to do kerning pairs for every single uh, instance of every letter that you've got that goes together because that just takes hours and hours and hours and it's totally unnecessary which I learned the hard way. I have spent days trying to do kerning pairs on every single character years ago and instant regret. Hopefully this video has been helpful. If you liked it, please give it a like and why not subscribe? And all that's left to say is cheers and I'll see you in the next one.